right. Hello, everyone. It's Mr. Barden here. I'm actually coming to you from uh, my work office right now, so things may look a little bit different. I've got kind of a solid background today. But anyways, let's just jump right into it. This video doesn't have to be that long. So basically, I'm just going to go over, if you can't quite tell by the title or the sketch here, uh, just how to add external libraries to your P5 sketch. This is going to be something that's going to be very useful to do, especially as you move along and do more advanced things. So I just want to cover a few quick ideas before we jump into actually implementing these libraries. So the first thing is just what is a library and why would you want to use it? Uh, well, if you didn't know this, um, P5 itself is actually a library. The coding language JavaScript, which is what I'm you know, doing all of this in, uh, just this course, this video, everything uh, is in JavaScript. That's just a framework. Right? So just how to format different things. So making a function, doing a conditionals, for loops, all this kind of stuff is just the framework of JavaScript. A library is like a little bit of extra code that's already been made that maybe gives you some extra functions or objects that you can use however you want. So that way you don't have to completely code every single thing from scratch in pure JavaScript. And that's where libraries kind of come in handy. So P5 itself is a library. For example, if I wanted to go in and say, you know, fill and there's a fill there's my circle that we're filling and I just run this. You can see I've got this kind of grayish blue circle right here. So again, the, the create canvas, background, fill, ellipse, these are all doing very specific things divine, de, uh, divine, defined by the P5 library. If you want to check the library and you know, the, all of this code, um, you can pull that up actually by checking out the HTML file. Uh, we're actually going to get into that in just a second, but if you weren't using this library in something and you tried to refer to you know, one of these functions in P5, it wouldn't work until you told it to you know, use this code. So if you go into the file editor, which you can open by clicking on this little arrow box here, you'll see a few files uh, just by default, and we want to look at index.html. So this is uh, kind of like the, the bones that the web page is built on. It's kind of a way to, to think about that. This is where we tell our co our sketch to you know go find the this library's code and use it. Uh, so maybe um, other ways to think about this would be you know like you have files on a flash drive and you can only access those when you plug that drive into your computer. Um, or again, it, it's uh, it doesn't actually work like this, but let's say you have your brain that does something and you're you know taking some piece of information and sticking it into your brain and there you, you have access to this new information you learned how to do something but only when you've taken it and added it in. Uh, again, it's just looking uh, for a piece of information. Um, you can actually see here we have some script file or script commands and this just tells us to execute something and it's just saying that there's a source, SRC, at this location and in fact if I copy this paste it and go, you'll see a very large JavaScript file right here. Um, you can scroll down and everything, it's taking a second to render, um, but everything that is P5, there was right as I changed my mouse, it showed up, but everything that is P5 is in this bit of code. Um, so let's see, we should have, uh, there's the version number, um, if, blah, 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 it was setting up all of these uh, things that it that p5 needs to be p5 all of the you know the canvas creation and the circle drawing and all that is defined in this big text file uh, we're just telling our sketch to look at it and it's hosted somewhere online you could download this file and then upload it and you know 
it would work the same way, but it's much easier just to have it hosted somewhere online and then you can just tell your code, hey, go look at this URL and use the code that's there. And that's what's going on right here. So we can see that you know the P5JS is in here as well as the P5 sound um, is just loaded in by default. As for where these are hosted, this place called uh, cloudfair.com uh, is used to host a lot of these sites um, and these codes. And I think we can, we're going to about to find out. Let's just go to the main cloudfair.com. Um, so essentially, you can search for um, the, the stuff that you need um, right here. So you can search for between the 4,081 libraries on this service. Uh, and there again, it's all hosted here, and you just send you get the link to this page conveniently enough for you i will uh, put links in the description to where you can find uh, some things that we'll use for this course already here but if you wanted to use another library you can just come to this cdnjs.com search for the one you want and you'll have that link to to include in your code but if you follow the links in the description, you will see um, a link to first this page right here, in addition to another one I'm gonna show you, um, and then this sketch that I'm building right now in the video. Um, but this first link will take you to this page in kind of the online textbook for this programming digital media course. As we look through the textbook, uh, specifically in the graphics unit, there's a section on game design using the P5 Play library. P5 Play is a library um, that essentially is used to create objects with special characteristics called sprites. So they're able to interact with each other and with the user in very unique ways. Again, I'm at the office today and the AC just kicked on, so hopefully that's not too loud. I don't have it all treated properly to filter things out. Um, we're going to find out. But as you scroll down, you'll notice a link down here to some uh, HTML code. And you see it's got the CDN stuff. This is technically a different website, but it still is the same idea. Uh, it's got the code right here, and you can copy it right into your sketch. So I recommend sticking this just right in your lines of script. So if you go to line six and paste this in, we are now using the P5 Play library. In fact, if I were to do what I did before, here's the P5 Play library. And it, it just, it automatically goes in. We have a, you know, plugged in the drive. We've added that part to our the brain of our code. It is right here. So it's very easy and very straightforward, but you are not, it doesn't make this by default. Again, I sh you already saw the default HTML file. Uh, we have to add this in. So for my students, um, in fact, this P5, um, you know, this little practice right here um, is kind of highly recommended to make a starting template. Uh, so that way, whenever you're doing anything and doing the game design things that I'll go over in this class and future videos, um, you just have this one starting code and you don't have to come back here all the time just to copy this every time you start up the code and then it doesn't work because you haven't added the library. It's just already there. You can just duplicate your stuff and keep going. So it's pretty useful. Again, just to get a little more practice with that, uh, there's another library we use uh, in this course called Tone.js. Now, I'm not going through anything that um, you know, these libraries do. I'm just showing you how to install them. So again, the Tone JS, I've got another uh, link to this page right here. But we've got another uh, script we can copy. This one's got a little more information just because the way it's formatted in the different web page. Uh, but we can copy this um, and then go on and then just, you know, after the last script, but before the link there, we'll paste that. And now we've loaded in Tone. So theoretically now this sketch is looking at four different libraries um, and we can take in and do stuff with these libraries very easily. Um, 
if you need to, you can change the version of tone here by changing the link. Um, there may be new ones that have, or probably will be new ones that come out after this video, and we update this as frequently as we can, but uh, if this link doesn't want to work, um, I will give you one tip right now, and that is if you just Google tone.js, um, this will, a bunch of stuff will pop up, um, but let's see, I'm just kind of showing you what the tone.js Not the logo. We want the reference. There we go. No, that actually wasn't it. I'm just going to Google tone.js reference. I know I misspelled that, but it'll pop. Oh, no, I misspelled it. There we are. Um, okay, so here we are. So you'll see that um, it will tell you the version name uh, for uh, this, you know, what this reference is here, and you can make sure that that matches up. So actually what's in the reference material, um, again, if you just Google this, you can find everything that's in the library. That'll be a separate video. Um, but you can make sure the versions match. So actually this part that's online for the, um, the everything in the library is actually not as new as what you can link to. So if you're having some issues, you can change this 14.8.9 to 7.77, and it, it'll still work. The last little thing I want to go over um, is that if you looked up here, we actually have um, a sound library already, this P5 Sound.js. Um, but whenever you use Tone to create um, audio projects in your sketch, I'm going to recommend that you actually get rid of P5 sound and just delete that. Because uh, essentially P5 sound is built off of tone and having both these libraries in there will cause them to, to fight each other because they'll be looking at, for the same thing in different places and they, it doesn't always work. Just uh, whenever you add in the tone JS library, go ahead and delete the script line that adds in P5 sound. That'll save you some headaches down the road, and uh, you can always add in additional libraries. You just find the place where the code is hit, uh, you know, host it online, put it in your HTML, there you go. Save it, it's, it's now there. Um, now I can, in my sketch, go ahead and do whatever I want. Uh, you know, I can be like, Let Bob, Bob is going to be a new sprite. Oh, it's Bob is going to be create sprite. I haven't done this in a second. Um, and let's say at 0, 0, 25 by 25. And then we can draw our sprites. And look, there, there's Bob right there. Um, all of these functions are not in the normal P5 code. So if I were to remove this line where we um, add in the P5 play library, notice, um, that's new. Uh, where didn't, that, that didn't, sorry, that's a JavaScript comment. commented that way, now we start getting problems because the this uh, it's almost like I've pulled out the flash drive and create sprite is a function in the P5 play library, not in normal P5, not in tone or any other libraries, so it's not working. You have to go in, and then we'll find it. Uh, it'll work just fine once we have linked to that library. Um, I don't remember what it is, but I was going to try and make Bob a specific color, but that's basically the end of this video right here. Um, so again, you just need to find where the library is hosted online. 
Um, again, you can pull up some of those links. Uh, I've got some for the libraries we use in this class uh, in the video description. You add that script to the uh, HTML file, save it. You may need, if your auto refresh isn't on, you'll have to um, you know, rerun your, uh, re-execute your code and it will have that library and then you can start coding in that library. Um, again, keep in mind that this is separate from the normal P5, so if you have any questions about anything, you're gonna definitely want to check out the reference material for that library. And if you just search the name of the library you wanna use, re uh, reference or documentation and stuff like that, it's usually online. It's kind of the standard thing to do is to have, you know, this documentation of all the things your library can do and you can kind of find what is relevant for you. So that's going to be it for this video. Again, relatively short one, uh, you know, not, not too long. Um, and again, that's just showing you how to add libraries, why you might want to, why you might need to. Um, Hopefully this was helpful for you all. If you like it, you know, give it the, the thumbs up, the subscribe, all the YouTube stuff. Um, and we'll go from there. I've got more videos coming out. Uh, the next few you can expect, if you're watching these in any kind of order of release, would be some things using the P5 Play library, sprites, interacting with them, things of that nature. And then we'll start moving more into sound and audio processing and generation using tone. So... That's going to be all, it all for me. I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you all the next time that I see you.